The Monkey's Paw by W. W. Jacobs. Mr. and Mrs. White lived with their son, Herbert. One evening, Sergeant Major Morris, an old friend, came to visit the White family. Morris told them stories of his adventures traveling the world for 21 years in the military. I would like to go to India too, said Mr. White. You are better off where you are now, said Morris, but there is so much to see there. What was that story you started telling me the other day about the monkey's paw, asked Mr. White. It is a story of magic, he said, as the White family leaned forward with interest. Morris took the monkey's paw out of his pocket and showed it to them. To look at it, it looks like an ordinary paw, dried up like a mummy. What is so special about it, asked Mr. White. There was a magical spell put on it by an Indian holy man. He wanted to show that fate ruled people's lives and that people who interfere with it did so to their sorrow. He put a spell on it so that three separate men could each have three wishes from it. The first man had his three wishes and I have had mine. It really works, asked Mrs. White. Yes, I had thought about selling it, but I don't think I will. It has caused enough trouble already. People don't want to buy it without trying it first. I should just throw it into your fire and be done with it. If you don't want it, you should give it to me, said Mr. White. Okay, but I am not responsible for what happens. I think you should throw it into the fire, said Mr. Morris. How does it work, said Mr. asked Mr. White. You have to hold it up in your right hand and wish out loud, but please try to wish for something sensible, Morris explained. Mr. White could tell that the monkey's paw was greatly upsetting his friend, so he put it away in his pocket for the rest of the evening. He encouraged Morris to continue with more stories of his interesting life. Later that evening, after Morris said goodnight to everyone and left, Mr. White took out the monkey's paw again his family discussed what they could wish for, money, power, and fame. They decided the first wish would be for 200 pounds, enough money to pay off what they owed on their house. He held up the monkey's paw in his right hand and said, I wish for 200 pounds. The man quickly dropped the paw on the floor. Horrified, the man said, it moved. The paw moved in my hand as I made my wish. It twisted in my hand like a snake. Well, I don't see the money, said his son, Herbert. I bet we never will. Never mind, said Mr. White. No harm done. Let's just go to bed. The next morning, there was still no money to be found in the White House. Herbert went out to work at his job in the factory. His parents sat at the breakfast table for a while, making jokes about the monkey's paw. That morning, another visitor came to the White House. Mrs. White invited the man inside. He seemed very nervous. I'm from the factory where Herbert works, the man said. Oh no, is Herbert okay? Asked his mother. No, he has been injured at the factory. He was caught in the machine. It was very bad, but he's not in any pain now. No, cried Mrs. White as she reached for the hand of her husband. I'm sorry, ma'am. The factory sends their sympathy for your loss. They don't take responsibility for the accident, but they felt they should offer you something for all the years hard of work Herbert had at the factory. What are they offering us? Asked Mr. White. 200 pounds, said the stranger. Mrs. White screamed, realizing what had happened. They were both very sad. A few days later, they buried their son in the cemetery two miles down the road. Their house was very empty and very lonely. They didn't speak to each other very often for the joy was gone from their lives. One night the wife woke up and screamed, the monkey's paw, that's the answer. Her husband was confused, what do you mean? We haven't used the other two wishes, exclaimed the wife. One wish was more than enough, cried the husband. No. We must use a wish to bring our son back to life, squealed the wife. Oh my goodness, you have gone crazy. We can't do that, said Mrs. Mr. White. Go get the paw and make the wish. I want my son back, said Mrs. White.
Mr. White didn't like this idea, but his wife could not be convinced it was a bad one. He went downstairs and found the monkey's paw. He held it in his right hand and made a wish. I wish my son was alive again. The paw wiggled in his hand and he dropped it to the floor. Mrs. White stared out the window, watching for her son to walk up the street to their home. After some time had passed, Mr. White heard a knock, a soft knock at the door. He was frightened. The knocking continued and his wife soon heard it too. My Herbert, she cried as she got up and ran downstairs to let her beloved son in. She unlocked the bottom of the door, but she was too short to reach the lock at the top of the door. Her husband always locked and unlocked the top of for her, but Mr. White was too afraid to open the door. His son had been caught in a machine and he did not know how he would look on the other side of the door. Mrs. White screamed at her husband to unlock the door, but instead he scrambled in the dark to find the monkey's paw and make the third wish. Mrs. White grabbed a chair and slid it over to the door. She stood up in the chair and reached out to, up to unlock the top of the door. Just as she did, Mr. White found the monkey's paw and made a wish. The knocking stopped suddenly. Mrs. White eagerly opened the door and a cold wind rushed into the house. A cry of disappointment and sorrow came from her mouth. Mr. Wright ran to her side and then down to their front gate. The street was quiet and empty. The monkey's paw.